easy guys. In this video I'm returning to a game that I haven't played in 14 years. The 2008 classic Spore, a life simulation slash real time strategy game developed by Maxis Studios. The last time I played this game I shamefully quit at the start of the creature stage after getting my ass kicked by a worm, never to play again. This time things would be different. I would create the most powerful creature ever to grace the galaxy and nothing would be able to stop me. To avoid potential embarrassment I would need the best start possible, so I turned to Google for inspiration. I would use Earth's most successful organism as a template for my new creature. But what would Google reveal to me? Most successful organism on Earth. The insect, okay. Most successful insect on Earth. The beetle, okay. Most successful beetle. Paul McCartney? The great Google Oracle had spoken and our destiny had been laid before us. We would conquer the galaxy as Paul McCartney. I chose to begin life as a peaceful herbivore out of respect for the beetle's participation in the anti-war movement. We would be a loving, kind species, but how would we survive and what adversity would we face on our new home, the planet Love Me Do? And out of the remnants of a crumbling asteroid, our beetle was born. Like a celestial sneeze sprayed into a puddle of water, Paul began his journey. Navigation was simple. W, A, S and D would allow me to swim around in my new environment. Instead, I found it much easier to use the mouse to click around the screen to move in different directions. As a herbivore, we simply run into the green floating vegetable things to eat them, topping up our health bar and offering us new DNA points to spend on upgrading our creature. Spore's beginnings are simple, yet the whole concept of being a tiny, basic organism that has to evolve to survive in its environment has so much potential. Paul was slow and cumbersome. To survive, he would have to eat, grow and evolve. But to upgrade and gain new parts for abilities, he would need to collect DNA points and acquire the blueprints or patterns for new body parts. As a carnivore, you can get both by consuming anything with abilities and adaptations that take your fancy. As a peaceful herbivore, however, Paul's only option was to hang around larger, aggressive carnivores and clean up the scraps that they left behind, such as some spikes that could be used to upgrade Paul's attack and defense. Now that he had some new DNA points and some new creature parts to spend them on, Paul called forth into the void, and out of the darkness a voice called back to him. It was the most beautiful creature Paul had ever seen, a young beetle spore named Linda. The two spores got on like a house on fire, and after a quick woohoo we were taken to the creature creator, where we could spend our DNA points and upgrade our creature's parts. Paul finally gained those menacing spikes. These proved superb at giving other organisms a good poke in the butt, making them think twice about ganging up on Paul. But we would need more creature parts to evolve and enrich our species. Paul frantically collected more plant matter, but the larger Paul grew, the further into unfamiliar territory he went. Giant organisms all around him snapped left and right. There were plenty of close encounters where Paul barely got out alive. If he stopped moving for a second, he risked being consumed. As Paul grew, enemies turned and fled, but Paul had some ways to go. His progress was tracked by a green bar at the bottom of the screen. Four more stages are left before we can progress onto land. Paul was about to pay a heavy price. Out of the blue, Paul thought he heard his beautiful partner Linda calling out to him. But as he turned around, she wasn't calling out to Paul at all. She was calling out to a new fancy man. Consumed by rage, Paul grew some menacing carnivorous jaws, and his beetle eyes turned red with bloodlust. All Paul saw was vengeance. He attacked every creature in sight. It felt like food was abundant now, as every creature around him had become a potential dinner. Paul grew more rapidly the more he ate, the creatures he consumed lending their DNA so Paul could become faster and more maneuverable. Paul picked a fight with anything in his path, great and small. He gained an omnivorous, mosquito-like proboscis that he used to suck the juices from anything in his way. The more he killed, the more DNA he collected. Poison and electrical defenses made him an unstoppable force as creatures were stunned to death in his mere presence. Paul had evolved into an incredible creature, but at what cost? A path of destruction was laid behind him. Paul was ready to move on. It was time for a fresh start on land. Paul would need to evolve into his new form. He was finally ready to make it onto land. Using the power of the creature editor, he transformed into a majestic beetle. Kind of. 
He called out to his fellow Beatles, and the whole band followed him out onto the beach. Now, I'm not the greatest creature artist on the planet, but let's try and make him look a little Beatle-ish. Mm, more like a grasshopper, to be honest. Look, I tried. Character movement seems more suited to WASD when on land. Your creature gets two sets of abilities, social and aggressive. Whichever is selected down here will determine how you interact with other creatures. Parts you add to your creature sometimes now come tied with extra abilities, such as singing and posing to impress others, or a charge or an attack to do extra damage. Again, Paul's objective was to evolve and gain DNA. He found he had an uncanny ability for song, which the other creatures nearby loved. Every time Paul impressed the alpha creature of a nest, he gained new creature parts. The more Paul sang, the more parts he gained. The best way to befriend another species is to interact socially with them and win them over. This starts a dance-off where you mimic the moves made by your target. If they dance, you dance. If they pose, you pose. This makes the progress bar move a little quicker. I don't recall Spore ever trying to teach me this though, so I spent most of my time spamming my most powerful dance move. Often this wasn't enough, leading to a few rejections. However, as you upgrade your body parts, you can find pieces with higher scores in song, dance, flashing, biting and so forth, making interactions with other creatures a little more forgiving. After a short while, your brain grows and you finally gain the ability to convince other members of your species to join your gang. And so it came to be. A fellow beetle named Jono joined Paul on his adventures raving about how much he loved some of the tunes that Paul sang to the neighbouring species and asked if he could join his band. Their musical styles blended perfectly and off they sang, making allies left and right, dropping bangers such as She Loves You and Help. However, things turned sour after a gig when some local trigger mortis thugs turned up. Stop playing that damn music so loud or we'll give you something to sing help about, their leader said. Paul backed off, but Jono had other ideas and took the front line. Come on then, big nose, Jono yelled, and a Trigo jumped in and started beating on Jono's face. Paul had to jump in and help his friend, but they weren't good fighters, they were singers and dancers. Our boys were surrounded, and it wasn't long before the fight went south. That was it, Paul thought. Peace and love were all good, but he couldn't let the band get pushed around like that. The Beatles had to evolve and so he grew an aggressive slasher on his backside. He also sported fantastic wings so the band could glide from nest to nest or escape trouble. After that, the boys were ready. Another bandmate jumped in, Pete, who said he was the best, so Jono and Paul took him under their new wings, and the trio went to find some new allies and put their enemies to bed. The other creatures loved the new trio, and the Beatles scored more and more DNA points from their fans and the new slashes the beetle had grown on their backsides gave them a definite advantage with the local thugs. Fights fell in their favour until a couple of Glorfindels jumped the lads, taking them by surprise. Paul and Jono got the upper hand, but Paul had lost the good fight and got face-planted. Pete, no! The boys returned home devastated. Paul had left the Beatles. This couldn't happen again. The Beatles needed to improve their physical form and adapt. Paul knew just what to do shaking dead A's to the music and bringing all the girls to the yard. Then, really distressingly, Paul laid an egg, which he never thought he could do. That was undoubtedly a personal discovery. Our Beatles learned to sing and fly better, and two more lads, Ringo and George, joined the group. The band went from strength to strength, singing pop hits, dancing, posing and taking names. The wings were great for allowing the boys to soar off hilltops, and then Jono yelled out. There he is, Jono had spotted one of the trigger mortis thugs that had given him a black eye back in the early days. Rest assured, this fight didn't go like the last, and our boys got the upper hand, banishing the trigger mortis species from the history books. Spore's creature combat can indeed feel slightly clunky, especially with many beetles trying to attack the same target. They can body block each other quite easily. After a long struggle, the beetles were now the most powerful creatures on the planet Love Me Do. With so much success, the group progressed from the creature stage. The Beatles proved adaptable, singing their songs to the world and winning many allies while standing up to the aggressive creatures who tried to push them around. Our species' history had some violence to it. The scars of Paul's first love were still there in his heart. And then, it was Jono, the warmonger. But Paul had always tried to resolve things peacefully, lending the Beatles the trait adaptable. Next was the tribal stage. This is where the game changes tack. 
the camera and controls become isometric, and you command multiple units simultaneously. Your creature evolution is over. It's time to focus on your tribe. Now our focus becomes our creature outfit and clothing. Again, much like body parts, these carry traits increasing social and combat prowess. Making allies or defeating other tribes grants these different upgrades. The beetles had to collect food, the only resource required for us to survive, build and expand. For now, most of the tribe would be allocated to doing food runs. Paul then offered some of this food to the wild creatures that inhabited the local area, who, after some persuasion with a large stick and some western music, became domesticated chilling out at the back of the base. As the beetles began to make their mark, it wasn't long before a rival group of chloroblast appeared, the arch enemy of the channel chlorophyll. Paul McCartney knew he wanted to make peace with the brown chloroblast village. Violence could not be an option this time, so he equipped his fellow beetles with flutes and the group set out to perform their most fantastic song of all time, A Hard Day's Night. Similar to the creature stage, creatures being socially interacted with indicates what they want you to play. If a tribe wants a flute, you play a flute. If they wish for maracas, you better shake those maracas. Rest assured, the Brown Chloroblast Village loved the Beatles' performance. The lyrics to A Hard Day's Night resonated with their struggles in the undergrowth, and they immediately allied themselves with our Beatles. Unfortunately for the Browns, their Hard Day's Nights were only just beginning, as their tribe had been placed directly next to a terrifying monster spawn, Mick Jagger, who took a frequent interest in destroying their base. However, Paul had no beef with a fellow musician, so he left him to reap havoc on the Browns' village. And so it was done. After destroying or aligning ourselves with another tribe, we gain a totem piece and new outfits and tools for the tribe. Our beetles chose peace, and with only a few new building placement slots, structures that prioritize instruments were chosen instead of weapons of war. It wasn't long before a new tribe was discovered, the Greens and the Cyans. Many didn't appreciate the Beatles hogging all the limelight and organized raids into Paul's village. Luckily, Paul's domesticated wildlife jumped to their aid, helping Paul overcome the enemy raids. But these were now desperate times as their list of enemies grew and it was becoming hard to maintain the tribe's population. Food gathering was put into high gear. However, this increased traffic at the food drop-off point occasionally started causing Spore's AI pathfinding to become stuck. Each beetle waited for another beetle in the queue to finish an action before being able to complete their own, requiring some manual interventions. Whilst this was happening, Paul set about easing tensions with some of the local villagers by dropping food gifts at their front door, easing relations between the two tribes. Once willing, Paul knew he would be able to dazzle them with his new hit songs that he'd been working on. Sure enough, he did, and as time passed, the beetles gained more and more technology and totems from their fellow chloroblast tribes. Peace with the Cyans was made, but the Greens persisted with their raids against the Beatles. Despite some disagreements with Jono, who insisted Paul should obliterate them all, Paul met the aggression head-on with more gift baskets, placating the Greens. Travel to and from the Green Village was difficult, as it involved travelling through Mick Jagger's hunting grounds. He always seemed constantly annoyed at the local wildlife, as he struggled to get satisfaction. After dropping off a food basket, the Green Chieftain stretched his neck, rotated his head and wore the basket as a hat without spilling any fruit on the ground. Paul was amazed. This was the most significant sign of respect Paul could have ever have hoped to achieve. As Paul carefully made his way back through Mick's hunting grounds, the brown chloroblast village had finally had enough at being eaten all the time, and they started rallying their entire tribe to defeat him. The Browns finally took Jagger down. After defeating him, it seemed only fair that Paul gathered the lion's share of the food from Mick Jagger's body after taking no part in efforts to defeat him. The brown chieftain waited patiently for Spore's Q system to offer him his turn, so he could finally take a plate of food as a long line of beetles took their share. After collecting all the totems from the neighboring tribes, the beetles became the most powerful tribe on the planet Love Me Do. And so the creature days were over. Paul no longer had to defend his tribe mates from the aggressive creatures that couldn't be reasoned with. Paul's persistence in making friends with every tribe he could paid off, pushing his beetle civilization towards the path of religion, where the beetles worshipped a higher power who could explain all things that our beetles could not control, and led them towards enlightenment. At last they could spread peace and love. In the next stage, civilization, the duties were to design a city hall and a new land vehicle, which took the form of a beetle larvae. Our first objective was to capture some of the spice vents, which would offer our cities extra currency. 
After that, we created various town buildings such as homes, factories and entertainment centers. Then laid out the buildings in a way that maximized their output, but also kept the populace happy. Factories generated income and decreased happiness, entertainment centers increased satisfaction, and houses increased the production of both when linked close by. It's a puzzle game to create the happiest city or generate the most income. The choice was ours. Spore also presented the opportunity for us to create our own musical theme for our new cities. As this was our new city hub of the planet Love Me Do, it seemed fitting to create a crude reconstruction of the Beatles hit Penny Lane. But the musical celebrations were short-lived, and it wasn't long before rival Beatle factions appeared. I expected to drop gifts and sing songs like we did in the tribal days. Only this time, perhaps we would convince the others to devote their lives to the will of our new religious Beatle teachings, the McCartney. Wrong. Instead, Paul turned his religious death rays on his opponents, destroying their tanks, planes and defences. The gameplay of the religious Beatles seemed little different from their militaristic cousins, who bombarded their enemies with their tanks. Anyone who disliked the Beatles had their defences eradicated and their cities converted. Paul targeted their city's entertainment centres, dropping the happiness and causing riots and unrest, while simultaneously preaching the ways of the McCartney to all who would listen to ease their dissatisfaction and turn them towards the Beatle cause. Some innocents would likely perish in the uproar, but the gods of McCartney would know their own. It didn't take much effort to completely destroy convert the first rival faction. Then Paul's rivals, the Blues, struggling with the Yellow faction, asked for Paul's help. Paul agreed, as he knew that all would eventually follow the way of the McCartney anyway. Slowly, more cities were converted to our own, increasing our income and unit capacity with each city until Paul's momentum became unstoppable. New vehicles were designed, such as the Water Strider attack missionary boats, and Mosquito Hawk planes that mimic the success of all powerful insect organisms. It wasn't long before the inevitable mass conversion of all beetle organisms on the planet. All hail the might of the McCartney, may all submit to his teachings and rise as the Chosen. Despite the Beatles' relentless persecution of anyone who disagreed with them, Spore decided that the Beatles were a peaceful, diplomatic race, and so it was time to take the Beatles into space, the final, longest stage in Spore. To begin, we must design a new ship, which of course, takes the form of a mighty Beetle. ish Instead of commanding multiple units, we now had control of a single ship. Our goal was to place more colonies on other planets out in the cosmos. There were bound to be countless other species out in the vastness of space, but who would Paul find, and would they befriend or foe? The first colony Paul placed out in the cosmos was on the planet Yastis, in a system adjacent to the solar system of Love Me Do. These colonies would be the key to the Beatles' riches. At first, basic, barren planets could support only a single colony, but lush worlds with a Terra score of three could support up to three colonies. The benefit of these extra colonies was the speed at which spice could be gathered. The more spice you produce, the more spore bucks you can make. But to improve the terror scores of planets he discovered, Paul would need expensive equipment. For now, spore bucks were scarce, so Paul set out to see if he could find life in adjacent systems to befriend and perhaps trade with. It wasn't long before Paul discovered the Gulgans, and despite their slightly cranky demeanor, he set out to complete missions for them, such as eradicating pests and finding old relics to earn some spore bucks. Eventually, allowing Paul the chance to buy some of that expensive terraforming equipment. The following species to be discovered were the Kinnels, who were much easier to please with gifts and trade. The Beatles began to expand to other star systems adjacent to their home planet. Many of these planets had a low terraform score, but it was a start, and Paul was determined that he needed to make as much spice as possible. As Paul disliked the Gulgans the most, they were grumpy and disliked his bribes, Jono suggested obliterating them, but Paul once again knew he had to find a peaceful solution, he wasn't about to give up now. He set up a trade route to their homeworld, hoping that eventually the Gulgans would sell the system to the Beatles without bloodshed. Whilst this happened, Paul scouted into the adjacent systems and uncovered more lucrative planets supporting rarer and more valuable spices, such as pink, blue and purple. It was laborious, scraping together enough wealth to colonize them, selling whatever spice he could gather from his small colonies to the Gulgans, or buying spice from the Kinnels and selling it to the Gulgans. The Kinnels started to become good friends with the Beatles, and it wasn't long before Paul struck up an official alliance with them. 
Unfortunately, this upset the Gulgans, who didn't want a growing military on their doorstep. Concerned by this ever-increasing alliance, they began expanding into Kinnel space. Sworn to peace, Paul wanted no part of this grievance. His primitive days of conflict and suffering were over now, even if it meant turning down their new allies' calls for aid. However, concerned for the Kinnels, Paul made a risky move. He decided to buy one of the Gulgans' planet buster warheads. His hope was that just owning this undeniable show of force would make the Gulgans think twice and withdraw their fleet from Kinnel space. Just as the device was loaded onto the ship, Jono slipped on a banana skin and the bomb dropped back to the surface of the Gulgans' homeworld. The Beatles watched in terror as all three Gulgans' colonies were obliterated. This seemed like a win-win scenario, but it couldn't be further from the truth. The obliteration of the Gulgans' planet scared the bejesus out of the Kinnels, who immediately cancelled their alliance and declared war on the Beatles. However, thanks to the success of the Beatles' network of barren spice planets, Paul had enough spore bucks to bribe the Kinnels and avert war. After a further bribe, the Kinnels now loved the Beatles once more. However, peace would never be achieved with the Gulgans, primarily because Paul was now skint, and not wishing to get his gentle hands dirty, Paul requested the Kinnels invade the Gulgans remaining colonies for a small fee. Surprisingly, the Kinnels had no problem with this. The Gulgans fought well, sending a counter-attack into Beetle space, although they were no match for the new alliance. The Kinnels extinguished the Gulgans from existence. In payment, the Kinnels claimed the Gulgans' systems for their own. Hand in hand, the Beetles and the Kinnels grew. Paul knew he wanted to expand the alliance by traveling further into space, seeking friendship with those who would accept his bribery. He met the Big Fish, the Popero, the Wub, the Lethal, and the Explix. Paul invited everyone to the new alliance, and many accepted. It wasn't long before their corner of the galaxy was bustling with new life. More importantly, all new peace. Paul's network of spice planets became well developed now. The Beatles offloaded tons of spice to other worlds, generating large amounts of profit. Any who were dissatisfied with these arrangements or no longer accepted Paul's bribes were dealt with by those who would, as Paul asked fellow Alliance members to wage war on those unwilling to bend, for a fee. This proved a successful tactic. If Paul wanted an ally system, he would set up trade routes, eventually providing him with the option to buy out the system completely. It's amazing what money can do for you and what others will do for it. Some racers even sold their only planet, selling themselves into extinction. Greed has no bounds. Enjoy that 10 million spore bucks. Better still, Paul achieved this without ever raising a weapon against another. Paul's only regret was setting up trade routes and buying out the Kinnels' systems to expand the Beetle Empire. The Kinnels had always been his best ally, but it was the only way Paul could acquire more worlds in this crowded system. He was always sure to set the Kinnels on anyone he didn't like, so the Kinnels might take their system for their own. Soon the Beetles had achieved all their badges and goals. They now inhabited multiple systems and had taken charge of their corner of the galaxy. But the rest of the galaxy was still there for the taking. With a powerful enemy at its core, would the mighty Paul McCartney and his race of Beatles have enough to take charge of the entire galaxy? <laughs>